So we carry on with our explanation for chapter two, railway rolling stock. And in this section, we'll be talking about the wheel rail interface. We talked about this interface a little bit earlier, but now we'll be talking about some of the forces and some of the, uh, some of the models that we used to uh, create a computer model that help us to understand the wheel rail interface in a better way. So without further ado, let's start. So, this is the section. Well, uh, we would not be discuss the uh, will not be discussing the idealized behavior of uh, track, but we'll be looking at contact forces and computer modeling of rail vehicles. So, contact forces and computer modeling of rail vehicles will be the main things that we'll be focusing on in this section. So, the contact patch. This small coin size or el 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 elliptical size, the size of 5P that connects between the rail and the wheel, this is what takes all the load from the wheel to the rail. And it has several forces. It has vertical forces and it has lateral forces. And in order to understand these vertical forces, you need to look at B0 force. This is B0, then B1 force, this is B1, and that's B2. So B0 force is the static load on the wheel. It's a static load because of the train weight. B1 is the dynamic force immediately after the impact that is generated by the movement of the wheel. But B2 force is also a dynamic force, but it's a, the result from the wheel and rail vibrating on the substructure. So the B2 force is a result of vibration, B1 is a result of uh, the dynamic load of the wheel, and B0 is the result of the, of the wheel. And those, all of those are vertical forces. Now for the lateral forces, we have creep forces and we have gravitational stiffness force. And creep force is that force that my, the, the wheel is, not, is uh, that could slide on the, to the right side, to the left side, and this is, we call it lateral forces because it does not happen because of rotation as much as about slippage. And it can happen on a micro, micro, micro level just to understand these, these small, this small, this small force. So creepage, to understand creepage, so this is the wheel, is rotation in this direction. And you have to the side, this creepage force happening. And maybe you have another creep force happening to the other side. This happens on both the, the, later, the lateral and the longitudinal directions, but not the vertical, because the vertical forces are B0, B0, B1, and B2. So when a wheel deviates from pure rolling during traction, braking, or curving, creepage or micro slip in the contact patch occurs due to different velocity of material in the wheel and rail. So creep force must be calculated. There are different ways of calculating this force. And it's, uh, it depends on uh, the wheel velocity and the rail velocity and other aspects. We'll not go into this calculation in these details, but it's important that you remember the main forces, B0, B1, B2, creep, uh, creep forces and uh, is also important. So rail profile and effective conicity. Actually, the load is also, uh, the, and the contact patch is, is, it can be affected by the geometry of the rail and the profile. But is there a way to measure both the rail and the, uh, the wheel in the same way? This is why people has produced effective conicity. Effective conicity is a measure between the wheel and the rail. And this, uh, so uh, the, the plot, if made the difference in the rolling radius between the two wheels on an axle, it will be R naught minus lambda and R naught plus lambda. What you need to understand is that this, is, this effective conicity is usually measured as lambda, to, and it's usually referred to as two lambda. The typical values of lambda range between 0 0.05 and 0 0.2. And this is effective conicity. Now we have some basic understanding of the forces, of the geometry, and we need to me make some complex calculations. So how we can do this? So what you really need is to build a computer model. And to understand the computer model structure, you need to model your track. And this is a track input, and you can get it from track data. You also need a vehicle model. And there are different vehicle models, and they can be modeled in a different way. 
And based on that, you need to do the, the calculation and get forces, accelerations, and displacement. And this will have assessment on derailment, on wear, and in rolling contact fatigue. So this is uh, track input, this is the vehicle model, model, and this is the simulation. So if, if we need to look at these components and look at the models examples, so for example, how we can model a spring. So a, a spring, let us say, it will have a force displacement. There is a, 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 a proportion, a, there is a, 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 a a relationship between a, a linear relationship between force and displacement. So this is a spring, and you need to look at dampers, how you can model dampers. And uh, not only that, but you need to look at different uh, elements. So there are coil springs, there are leaf springs, there are rubber elements. They are all can be modeled as springs, but how would they behave exactly in a mathematical form and in, math in exact mathematics? Damper. You have hydraulic damper, you have friction surface, and you have rubber elements. Now, about track description, you would have discrete events. That's something that happened in a discrete way. Periodic excitation, you have that cyclic top, and major data. Major data based on track recording coach. So even the track itself, you need to think how I can model the track. Is it discrete events that every uh, section have its own uh, geometry? Is it periodic excitations, which is about modeling irregularities that that track is have that uh, a top and down, top and down because of small, small irregularities? Or is it based on uh, you get it from major data and you measure it from uh, the data you collected from a track recording coach? And th those coaches, those trains, tour around all the network and they make sure that they get to detect any fault and they make sure that you have a, an understanding of the situation of the infrastructure. Now for uh, examples of simulation packages, now after you collect this data, you start building your uh, software, but actually this software has been, uh, some softwares have been developed before the Adams rail models have been developed and there is a Vampire model as well. And Vampire is a software that can help you to calculate these vehicle dynamics and based on uh, people who have been uh, uh, thinking carefully about the models and about their accuracy. Uh, and it was used by famous uh, companies in the UK. So that was it for the wheel rail interface. We'll continue our uh, discussion uh, of the second chapter, railway rolling stock systems, in the coming in, in the coming uh, section. Have a great evening, and see you the next section. Take care.